Snowplow crews aren't the only ones preparing for the snow and ice tonight. It's a Sunday, so most hardware stores close early, which means a lot of people will be coming to the gas stations to stock up on bags of salt. If a tragedy does happen on the ice, the fire department is the first ones called, but the Calumet County dive team is right behind them, ready to moment's notice. Divers get ready in the truck, like putting a suit on like this so that they're ready when they get to the scene. Everything is donated, so all of the money is going to Brayden, and his family couldn't be happier. The event is not only great for kids of all ages, but it's free, which parents say is not a bonus. But gambling experts say that for some people, social sports betting may turn into a problem. It's called Hoops to Help, and so many parents registered their kids for the camp, there was a waiting list. Hundreds of people out to show their support for a family going through a rough time. Organizers are working on making a permanent co-op grocery store in downtown Green Bay, selling everything from maple syrup to pasta all year round. Volunteers first come to this table to grab supplies and a quilt kit. And at the end of the day, there are more than 600 blankets to give to kids in the Fox Valley and Green Bay area. Wrightstown School District is testing out existing emergency response plans and learning how others will respond. What happens when we call 911? Who's responding? Who's doing communications? And it's a chance for area law enforcement to understand the school district's plans. We need to know where those children are going to go. We need to make notifications to the family so we don't have them coming to the scene and we're staging an area where they can go to and pick up their children. Brown County Emergency Management Director led today's exercise, choosing Wrightstown because of its location. It was one of the outlying areas where we're bringing in multiple agencies and, and actually multiple counties. Participants got a call that an active shooter was loose inside these hallways and they all had to present their plans for how they'd respond effectively. Today also marks one of the first times the school district and Wrightstown police are working together. The two organizations have clashed for the past few years, but Buvolt hopes this exercise is a step in the right direction. This was an opportunity for us to literally be sitting at the same table talking about that. So it was good to hear what Wrightstown PD was going to do. The school district's next step is to hold a practice drill for students and faculty. In Wrightstown, Allison Byers, NBC 26. Sturgeon's Fearing season on Lake Winnebago comes to an end today. The season officially ended at 12.30, making it the third consecutive year the season lasted all 16 days. 12 fish were registered today, putting the total at 306. Outside Jerry's Bar, it's quiet as people wait for a sturgeon. Two fish came early this morning, but otherwise nothing until Mark Marin shows up. That's my first one. Marin has been sturgeon spearing for a long time with no luck. I've been doing this for going on 20 years, probably 17, 20 years. Until today. Oh! Grabbed the spear, I couldn't get the darn thing off the hook, and I threw it, and he's like, what the, what was that? And I'm like, that's a sturgeon. Marin catches the sturgeon five minutes before the end of the season, making for a great last day. We got one on! And then, then it gets busy, because you're getting stuff out of the hole, and strings, and decoys, and so it was, uh, it was very exciting. Others and the season sturgeonless. We didn't get a fish, but nobody had more fun than we did in our shack. Our water clarity caused problems on Lake Winnebago, a much deeper lake than the upriver lakes. If you can only see down six or seven feet and, and 12 feet of water or deeper, it's just harder to see fish and in turn harder to spear fish. But anglers say the season could have been worse. Ice conditions improved and the water clarity got better as the season went on. This season's problems didn't stop one first timer from getting hooked on the sport. I think I'm going to start taking vacation during the weeks of sturgeon string next year. Marin heads home with his prize. Those not as lucky are sad to see the season end, but can't wait for next year. We get back together with the family and do it all over again. In Oshkosh, Allison Byers, NBC 26. Everyone hopes conditions on Lake Winnebago will be better next year. In the Green Bay Newsroom, Allison Byers, NBC 26. A Kakana man will spend the next 11 years behind bars for setting fire to a Planned Parenthood in Grand Chute back in April, a sentence that prosecutors say is fair. Mr. Grady uh, is able to effectively serve his prison time and uh, stay on the straight and narrow. But his sister wishes for a lighter sentence. Maybe a couple years higher than I thought it would be. Cameras were not allowed inside the courtroom, but Grady apologized to Planned Parenthood employees 
saying he committed the crime after hearing voices in his head telling him to destroy the facility. Despite an apology inside this courthouse, the judge and prosecution called this a serious offense. Even though Grady is bipolar, they say he knew what he was doing. This is a good wake up call for him that that kind of conduct just won't be tolerated in our community. He hasn't heard those voices since the incident, but his family hopes he receives treatment. I just hope he gets help in that time. Planned Parenthood called this an act of terrorism. I don't think he meant to do it, but I know he's not a terrorist. Grady says he plans to appeal. In Green Bay, Allison Byers, NBC 26. After working for a few businesses that throw out unsold food, Heather Connard is happy to be working for a coffee shop that gives back. It's different than any place I've ever been to. Luna Cafe gives back to the community in a number of ways, like donating a portion of good dog coffee sales to the Bay Area Humane Society or giving unsold baked goods and coffee to the new community homeless shelter. They get awesome bakery because it's all made here from scratch every day. So anything that's left over, they get. Connor freezes the baked goods, making sure they stay fresh until she has a chance to drop them off. The food local businesses are donating maybe a day old, but that doesn't mean they belong in the trash. It's too good to throw away, so we want somebody who will actually who will enjoy it. I take the product home on a daily basis, and I don't eat it all in one day, so I know it's good for a few days. Adam Sloda works at Panera Bread, a national company giving back locally. The company donates unsold bread and baked goods every day to local churches and food banks as part of their day-end donation program. There's a lot of people that can benefit from, you know, all of the stuff that is not utilized, so there's no sense in wasting it. Sloda says it's disappointing to hear of companies companies throwing away unsold food, especially with how easy it is to give it away. All we do is package it up. We don't, I mean, there's very little effort on our part. Both say they help companies throwing items away change their practices. In Green Bay, Allison Byers, NBC 26.